Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal. I am the founder of Wise Up and today we have with us Shantanu Katakam, a PhD candidate at University of Texas at Austin. Shantanu has published his first PhD research paper in the Desalination Journal with a 9.9 .9 impact factor and a 15.2 side score. Today Shantanu is going to share with us all his secrets to doing research as to how did he choose his research topic, which tools did he use to write his research paper and finally what were his strategies to choosing the right journal for publication. So without further delay, let's get started. Hi Shantanu, thank you so much for coming on our channel. Could you please tell us something about yourself? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Shantanu Katakam. I did my B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from NIT Warangal. Right now, I'm a PhD student at the Mechanical Engineering Department of University of Texas at Austin. My current research interests are green hydrogen and desalination systems. And I just published my first paper. Right? Yeah, That's fantastic. Congratulations, Shantanu. Thank you. <laughs> so, Shantanu, uh, you're studying at uh, UT Austin and you're enrolled in the PhD program. So, tell us about your journey. Like when you joined the program, how did you go about choosing your research topic? Did your professor help you or you had to zero it down yourself? Uh, actually, my professor gave me the bigger problem statement that I should be working on. So he's mm -hmm. working on this problem for converting the oil field wastes to green hydrogen. So mm -hmm. he just pitched me that idea and that was pretty interesting. So I initially started off with the literature review where uh, the major chunk of the literature review involved uh, like collecting a lot of papers from Google Scholar where I used to just type in the main keywords that my problem statement involves. And based on that, uh, I got a lot of extensive literature review. And upon uh, discussions with my supervisor, based on the literature review, I could generate a few ideas that I can work on and then which eventually led to my first paper right now. And what about the literature review? Did you use any AI tools for your literature search in the beginning? Uh, I mean, I wish I could have used the AI tools in the literature review. That could have really decreased my efforts, I should say, in a way. But uh, yes, that is something that I'm planning to do for the next problem statement that I'm working on. Understood. So once you had completed your research, how did you go about writing your research paper? Did you use any resources that could help you? Again, did you use any AI tools that could help you in the process? If you could tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, so the general procedure that I followed for my research paper, and I'm sure I think I'll be following it in my subsequent papers for my PhD, mm -hmm. is initially writing down a structure because that is what my PhD supervisor would prefer. And then when we agreed upon the structure of the paper, then I used to just go about writing each section out. And mm -hmm. this is where the course from Wise Up Communications really helped me mm -hmm. because initially before I took the course, I didn't have a lot of clarity on what should a paper consist. Now that I know what should a paper consist, my major focus will be on how to present. So the major clarity in terms of what should a paper consist and in what flow of things that should be there in a mm -hmm. actual journal publication, that, that is the information that I got a lot from, from the Wise Up Communications course. So I should really thank that. Got it. Thank you so much, Shantanu. And we're glad that you found the course useful and you were able yeah. to publish your first research paper from that. And what so, about AI tools? Did you use any AI tools? Uh, I used Grammarly, which I think is an AI tool for uh, the basic grammatical error correction and any, everything. But uh, in writing, everything was on my own and editing was through my supervisor. So nothing much of an AI. So once you'd written the research paper, Shantanu, how did you go about the publishing process? Like a lot of students have this question, how do we go about choosing our journal? So did you make a list of journals you could send your uh, paper to or did your supervisor help you in the process? Can you tell us a bit more about it? I mean, this is again where the Wiser Communications video was really helpful, where uh, okay. one of the tips that I remember from the communications video is look at the journals look at the journals in which your literature review papers have been published a lot on. So mm. Desalination was one journal in which I could find a lot of papers being mm. published and they are and pretty relevant to my journal topic. Well. Desalination yeah, yeah, is a it's very a very popular journal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, based on that, I thought like, okay, Desalination should be one of the things. 
and mm-hmm. one more tip that uh, and this general tip that i really get from my supervisor is based on the area or the area that the paper is covering based on the content mm-hmm. of the paper i just used to decide about two or three options as to okay it can go into this journal okay. can, if not then this journal might be suitable so it's mainly based on the keywords or the important topics that your paper mm-hmm. is touching on so one advice that i would give is go to the major publication house which is like elsevier or mm. uh, american asme or uh, so go there type in the keywords and search for the journals which actually yeah. have this keyword like i mean this keywords are relevant to those journals so based on those journals you can narrow down like which journals to publish and uh, one more thing that i would definitely advise is after narrowing down the journals go to the journals web page and also check specifically the topics that they are saying that okay these topics might be relevant for publishing okay. in that journal so that list would be also really helpful absolutely in fact nowadays there are so many journal suggested tools also that are available so even if you go on yeah. elsevier you will find there is a journal suggested tool where if you sure. enter certain keywords mm-hmm. or your abstract it actually gives yes. you a list of journals from their portfolio that would be yeah. uh, applicable for you which is quite helpful i think yeah So uh, Shantanu now that you are in the PhD program and I'm assuming you've completed one year in your PhD program I yes. understand that PhD degrees are not without their own share of challenges so what kind of challenges have you faced in your PhD program and how did you manage to cope up with it thankfully i haven't faced any bigger challenges with respect to work because my supervisor is pretty hands off but the only thing that i would say is like uh, you need to have a good skill at managing your time in terms of like having a good work life balance you need to have enough space for your personal uh, thing so that, that that space will keep you motivated to come back to the professional space and work again and again because phd is a long journey right so you would easily get burned out if you just spend a lot of time initially in the same prop you need to give that small gap small breaks in between so that you'll be equally motivated throughout so it's more about consistency in your performance every day rather than just performing it initially very nicely and then just the performance keeps dropping over the years that's right yeah. so shantanu <laughs> thank you so much for coming on our channel today and sharing such great insights with us now i have one final question if there was anything that you would like to share with your fellow researchers as to what can they do to publish their first research papers what would that be so one advice that i would give to the young researchers who are just starting their mm-hmm. career in like just starting the phd with respect to publications is how effectively you can communicate your scientific information in the minimum possible number of sentences or minimum possible number of words okay because one thing is you have a word limit that you have to keep in mind while you're writing a publication and you also are pretty tempted to just explain all the extensive details of the results that you have got but you cannot do that after a point so you need to be very effective in communicating your results and that doesn't mean you have to condense down the value of your results uh, but it's more of a skill that uh, i think my supervisor has it and that is something that i would like to learn over the course of my phd great so shantanu thank you so much uh, for your insights and we had a wonderful time talking to you and wish you all the best for the remaining years of your phd uh, i'm sure you're going to publish many more papers and uh, succeed in your phd journey so thank you so much for joining us today yeah thank you for taking my interview and like i would like to really thank the guidance that you have given with respect to research writing and uh, other aspects related to phd admissions so i mean i would like to specifically mention that because that is something that has really helped me in the mm-hmm. both in the admissions process and even after coming even in my phd research so thanks a lot for that i'm glad thank you so much antanu and wish you all the best yeah thank you